In the future, Earth is invaded by an alien race known as the Formix, killing a good hunk of humanity. The invasion was stopped by a pilot known as Mazer, who crashed his plane against the Formic queenship at the cost of his life. For the following 50 years, the international fleet is created and it recruits children to become soldiers who one day will guide a new fleet to a counterattack. These kids are trained through war games and are watched over by a monitor connected to their necks. One of their best players is Ender, whose skills sometimes make other kids think he's cheating, however he never raises to the taunt. Colonel Graf thinks Ender is the hero they need, but Major Anderson is skeptical because they need more than just battle skills, they also need the personality of a leader. One afternoon, Ender is called to the infirmary to get his monitor removed, which means he's out of the program. After the very painful procedures done, Ender's surrounded by jealous kids that drag him into a classroom as they accuse him of cheating and want to beat him up. Now that he doesn't have the monitor anymore, Ender doesn't hesitate to defend himself and beats the leader up before threatening everyone. Graf and Anderson are still watching all this through other cameras, and Graf is proud of Ender for his reaction. When Ender returns home, he tells his sister Valentine about what happened, feeling bad over how violently he reacted because he doesn't want to become like his brother Peter, who was kicked out of the program for his bad attitude. Valentine tries to comfort Ender, but their conversation is interrupted by Peter, who comes to challenge Ender to a fight for getting kicked out too. However Ender doesn't react, and he's left alone when he shields. Later during dinner, Ender's parents try to remind him there's nothing to be embarrassed by when suddenly, Graf and Anderson show up at their door. It turns out that taking out the monitor had been a test to see how Ender behaved without it and, after asking him a few questions, they confirm he passed because his decision to beat up the other kid had been tactical. He didn't fight because he enjoyed hurting other people, he did it to stop them from bothering him in the future. Graf thinks Ender's mind is as bright as Mazer's and wants him to come back, if he accepts he'd be graduating to battle school without the monitor. Ender accepts and he's taken to the shuttle that will carry him and other graduated kids to battle school. There, Ender meets Bean and Ally, who can't help throwing up when the shuttle takes off. Graf comes to check on everyone and when Ender makes a joke, Graf informs the group that Ender is the smartest kid in the class, which puts everyone's attention on Ender in a rather awkward way. When they arrive at the school, Ender tells Graf that his little announcement made everyone hate him, but Graf explains the army needs their own Caesar to win this war. Afterward, Ender goes to his room, where he's met by some of the students already teasing him for thinking he's better than everyone. Their conversations interrupted by Sergeant Dapp, who teaches them the rules of the place in a rather condescending way and reminds them that teamwork is the key to survival. Later in class, Graf reminds everyone of their responsibilities and plays a video of Mazer's victory, which Ender find weird. The next morning, the team is taken to the battle room, which has zero G. Graf makes Ender go first to demonstrate, and the rest of the kids quickly follow him, slowly getting used to the lack of direction. Ender and Ben get together and decide to try out their weapons, discovering that the shots freeze any body part they touch. After some minutes of practicing, Graf calls everyone back and explains this is the room where they'll be competing against other school teams. Then Dapp explains the rules of the game, they get one point for a hit to a limb and six for a torso hit, but if either side gets one cadet through their enemy's gate unharmed that army will win regardless of points. For the following three months Ender spends his days training in the school and writing emails to Valentine, although he never gets a reply. The training includes studying formic flight patterns and hand-in-hand -hand combat, which keeps them aggressive and makes Ender feel like Peter. Ender's still not sure anyone truly understands their enemy, especially because nobody tells them properly what Mazer did to defeat the entire fleet last time. Graf tells Ender he wants him to lead, but Ender doesn't know how to do that when everyone's so different and he always eats alone. One evening, Graf informs the class that some people in the higher ranks have failed to meet the standards to get into command school, so now there's a chance for students in this class to get a promotion. Ender asks Graf if their emails are being blocked, and Graf confirms all communication is being temporarily held back because people on Earth don't need to know what's happening here. Afterward, Dapp makes Ender do push-ups while insulting him, reminding him not to speak unless spoken to. After Dapp leaves, Ender is surprised to see the other kids now look at him with respect. The next day, a teacher informs them there are only three passing scores on the deep space navigation test, Ally, Bean, and Ender, causing Bernard to accuse them of cheating. The teacher wants to go over some exercises and asks Ender to demonstrate, but Ender says Ally and Ben understand the concept better, and the teacher calls for Ally instead. While Ally explains his answers, Bernard writes insults about Ally's weak stomach that appear on everyone's screens, so Ender writes something about Bernard and sends it back, making him mad. The teacher hears him complain and when she sees what's happening, she tells Bernard not to dish it out if he can't take it. Later during lunch, the class comes to sit with Ender, leaving Bernard behind. In the evening, Ender finds a game on his tablet and tries it out while Ally watches him. In the game, Ender plays as a rat that must choose between two goblets, but no matter what Ender chooses, the rat dies. He then decides to make the rat attack the troll handing out the goblets, which allows him to pass the level. Ally doesn't understand why, and Ender explains the academy is training them to be violent. This game is being watched by Graf and Anderson because it's another test, and Anderson is surprised by Ender's solution because it's never happened before. 
It also confirms Graf's belief that Ender is the perfect soldier, thus Ender instantly gets promoted to the Salamander army, which is known for being undefeated. When Ender finds his new quarters, he meets Petra, the only girl in the Salamanders, and the leader Bonzo, who is angry to see Ender as his new team member because he thinks he's skinny and useless. Bonzo informs Ender he'll trade him as soon as he can, and for now, he doesn't want him getting in the way. During matches, Bonzo wants Ender to enter the battle room and stay in a corner without doing anything until the team is ready to move through the gate. Afterward, Petra informs Ender that the battle room is open for practice 24-7, so she can help him with the training if he wants. Ender accepts and the two of them end up in the battle room, where Petra shows Ender a few tricks to be a better shooter. When Bonzo sees them return to the room together, he gets furious and tells Ender that he isn't allowed to practice at all. Ender asks him to speak in private and explains he'll respect every order Bonzo gives him during training, but he won't allow for his free time to get controlled by him too. Besides, if Bonzo wants to trade him, it'll happen faster if Ender shows growth. Ender offers a simple deal, Bonzo can pretend he won this argument, and the next day he can tell anyone he changed his mind, that way he keeps his respect as a leader and Ender still gets his free time. Bonzo insults Ender for being impertinent, but the next morning, he does exactly as Ender said. Sometime later, the first match begins, and at first Ender stays in his corner like Bonzo asked. However their team begins to lose, so Ender jumps in to help Petra and make a plan together. Petra pushes Ender while he pretends to be frozen. This allows him to steal two guns and start a one-man attack that takes the enemy by surprise and gets the victory for the Salamanders. Graf is watching all this and is delighted to see Ender shine. During lunch, the other Salamanders call Bonzo out for holding Ender back, humiliating him. Later, while Ender and Petra are practicing hand-to-hand -hand combat, Bonzo interrupts them to punch Ender, threatening to kill him if he ever makes him look like a fool again. When it's time to go to bed, Ender picks up the game on his tablet again and the rat finds a bug-like creature that wants him to do something he can't understand. Then the creature transforms into Valentine, who suddenly has to run away when the area finds itself under attack. The rat follows Valentine into a fallen building and after transforming into Ender, he finds a weird sphere with Valentine inside in the middle of the room. Then the carpet becomes a monster and attacks Ender's avatar, causing Peter to appear in the sphere and call Ender a killer. Terrified, Ender immediately closes the game. Meanwhile Graf is furious with Anderson because he thinks her game is pushing Ender's psychological state to the edge. Anderson explains she doesn't understand how these images got into the game and that she can't modify them, so Graf makes her delete the game entirely. Afterward, Graf decides to accelerate some promotions in the program to be ready in time. He calls Ender to his office and asks him if he'd like to command his own team, the Dragon Army, which was a name that got discontinued four years ago because they couldn't win. Graf thinks Ender can have his own team of freaks like him, and Ender accepts. After Dap shows Ender his new quarters and finally treats him with respect, Ender meets his new team, which includes Eli, Bean, and Bernard. Ender surprises everyone by asking for mutual respect and to be told of any ideas they may have because teamwork is the most important. From then on, Ender pushes his team to work hard, making something even out of Bernard, and they soon reach third place in the team ranking. Anderson reminds Graf their higher-ups are impatient and want a decision on which team will advance any day now, but Graf hates that the Dragons haven't reached first place yet. To fix this, Graf proposes something that has never been done before, a battle with three teams, including the three first places, Dragons, Salamanders, and Leopards. The team receives the news out of nowhere, and in their hurry to get ready, one of the guys hurts his ankle. Ender sends him to the infirmary and gets ready to approach this challenge with a smaller team, but luckily, Graf sends Petra as the replacement. Ender first sends Petra out with a boy as a shield so her shooting skills can get rid of the campers by the gate. Then, he ties a rope around Bean and makes him scout the room for intel, this gives enough information for Ender to make a plan. The whole team makes a meat shield around Eli and they move straight to the enemy's gate, winning the game. After the game, Bonzo approaches Ender in the showers, asking him to fight. Ender doesn't want to but has no choice and he defends himself, accidentally pushing Bonzo too hard and making him hit his head on the floor. An unresponsive Bonzo is immediately taken to the infirmary for surgery, and Anderson and Petra try to comfort Ender, but Graf interrupts them to talk to Ender alone. He swears Bonzo is going to live, but Ender doesn't believe him, so Graf admits Bonzo will be sent back to Earth for recovery. Ender wants to go with him and see his sister, but since Graf refuses to give him time off, Ender quits. Afterward, Anderson calls Graf out for not seeing their students like the children they are, but Graf reminds him he needs to see them as soldiers if they want humanity to survive. Sometime later on Earth, Valentine arrives at her home to find Graf there, asking her for a favor. Valentine knows Graf wants to use her to make Ender rejoin the army, and Graf simply replies he wants Ender to save lives. Then Graf takes Valentine to see Ender, who takes her on a boat ride so they can speak in private. Ender explains how bad he feels for having to destroy lives because to understand an enemy, he needs to love them. Valentine reminds him that hurting Bonzo was self-defense and explains that she refuses to convince him to rejoin like Graf wants her to, but she does think Ender is here because he's afraid. 
She points out he can't hide here forever and that if he doesn't try, everything will be lost. Ender accepts to go back to the army, but only if Graf doesn't block his emails anymore. Instead of going back to battle school, Ender is taken to the command base near the Formic home planet, where he has earned the right to train for the final test. If all goes well, Ender will get to command the entire invasion fleet. This base is on a planet that used to belong to the Formics until the humans drove them away almost three decades ago. Ender doesn't understand why they need to keep attacking the Formics if they're contained in their own planet, and Graf explains it's in order to stop them from attacking again in the future, the same reason why Ender had beat up those students months ago. Dap shows Ender to his new room, which includes an oxygen tank in case there's a need for an evacuation. The next morning, Ender is startled by the sudden appearance of a weird tattooed man that jumps on him and reminds him to trust nobody, not even his teachers. This man turns out to be Mazer, who isn't dead after all, so Ender gets to comment on what has been bothering him. Whenever they show the video of Mazer's victory, they cut the footage right after he destroys the carrier and he doesn't understand why. Mazer takes Ender to watch the whole recording and it's revealed that after Mazer destroyed the main carrier, all the other Formic ships stopped attacking and began falling out of the sky. Mazer explains Formics are compared to ants for a reason, they also depend on their queen, and if the queen is out of commission, the others can't think for themselves and die. The reason why this is kept classified is that they aren't 100% sure Mazer destroyed the queen's ship, meaning they can't depend on that strategy yet. But if the Formics have rebuilt their fleet, there must be another queen on their home planet, and the only reason why they left is to seek water. Afterward, Mazer takes Ender to meet the team that will assist him during the training simulations, which includes Bernard, Bean, Petra, and Eli. Then Mazer shows the team how the Formics have been growing their military power at an alarming rate, so they'll have to attack first to prevent them from going out again even if Ender doesn't think it's fair to go after creatures that are keeping to themselves. The simulations will begin with photoreal simulations to best approximate real battles, and Ender will command the overall strategy that he'll pass to his teammates, who will each command a battle group formed by drones. The most important thing is to protect the MD-500, a weapon that can shatter molecular bonds and Petra is trained to fire. For the first few simulations, Ender and his team fly through them without issues, gathering victory after victory. But the simulations keep getting more complex and real, and after a few months of pure pressure, Ender loses his first battle. Mazer yells at Ender for his failure, and when Ender points out he can't win if he doesn't take risks, Mazer points out he needs to focus on the big picture and relegate the small mop-ups to his team. Graf also explains Mazer is frustrated because he's trained many teams in the past and they all lost, but Ender will be the last because there's no time to train anybody else. The higher-ups have decided tomorrow will be Ender's final simulation, and if he wins, he'll command the real fleet. In the evening, Ender chats with Petra, explaining he doesn't want to go to war and wishing he could speak to their enemies to understand them better. Petra reminds him studies on formic bodies have shown they don't have vocal cords, making Ender wish he could think to them instead. The next morning, Ender gets ready with his team for the final simulation, which is watched by Graf, Mazer, and a bunch of higher-ups. This simulation will be staged at the Formic home planet, where they immediately see the enemy fleet. Ender orders Eli to engage so Petra can fire the MD-500 at the swarm, but this only causes the rest of the Formic fleet to leave the planet and come after them. Since the MD-500 needs time to recharge, Ender copies the strategy he used in the battle room and surrounds their main weapon with the other smaller ships as a shield. Then he makes Petra fly the MD-500 toward the planet, and since the shield begins burning when they enter the atmosphere, Ender asks Bean to send his drones to take care of the incoming swarm so they can at least have a clear way and survive long enough. Once the MD-500 is recharged and close enough, Ender makes Petra fire the weapon, which effectively destroys every single living being on the planet and wins them the fight. The team celebrates their victory, but Ender soon begins to worry when he notices they're still seeing images of the planet burning to the ground for some reason. Mazer and Graf come to congratulate Ender and thank him for saving humanity because it turns out that hadn't been a simulation, it had been the real deal. Ender immediately has a breakdown when he realizes he abandoned their own soldiers to use them as a shield and has destroyed an entire species that may have been just preparing to defend themselves, considering they never went back to Earth in 50 years. The others try to call Ender a hero, but he can only see himself as a killer. Since Ender is starting to lose it, a nurse puts him to sleep with an injection and they take him to his room to rest, where Petra watches over him. In his dreams, Ender sees the bug creature from the game and realizes is the Formic Queen, who is protecting the sphere in the building and has always been trying to communicate with him through his dreams. Finally understanding what she needs, Ender wakes up and runs out of the room to leave the base, so Petra has to follow him to bring him an oxygen tank before he dies. Ender is thankful but sends her back because he must do this alone, then he proceeds to walk into the fallen building where he finds a Formic Queen with a sphere, which is actually an egg. The Formics never intended to fight the humans, they had only been looking for water for their new babies. The queen comes closer and puts her paw on Ender, but she lets go when she sees he means no harm. Understanding that the queen is dying, Ender takes the egg and promises to find a good home for it. Now the war is over, Ender is promoted to admiral and given a small ship as a reward, 
which he uses to fly into deep space and start a new formic colony with the egg to make up for his sins.